pick up a hundred fish from Phil. Some of the rarest fish, some of the rarest catfish you could get. We lost a lot with some beautiful colors, so. And this should drain the pond. <laughs> we're blood brothers, we're trauma bonded. Welcome back to Rob's Quads, guys. In today's video, we're going crazy setting up my fish store. It's an online fish store that we're buying fish today, moving stuff around in the fish room, as well as trapping wild aquarium fish for this store so I could list them online and share these fish to you. I wanted to real quick thank Larson before we get into the video for sending me these fish traps off the wish list. But before we get into the video, please like the video, subscribe channel, and turn on post notifications. So right now, guys, we're at one of my best jewel cichlid spots to list these. Now, I got a license so I can actually legally catch non-game fish. So anything that isn't prohibited or a game species, I could legally throw up on the site. Any kind of plants I could throw up on the site. Any kind of frogs I could put up on the site. So today's plan is... I'm gonna open up this bag of cat food as much as I'm struggling right now and get these traps set real quick. So we're going to be heading to my breeder friend Phil's house. He's like a master fish breeder. Breeds tons of super cool aquarium fish like plecos, corridors, guppies, the whole nine. And I'm also going to my other friend's house and picking up a 300 gallon stock pond to start moving some fish around. I think we're gonna move all the platies into the bigger pond to free up space in that 150 gallon. I think I do plan on the, in the future guys, clearing out my 120 gallon tank of all the cichlids isolating them by color and breeding them to also list on the site so we got a lot of things coming if there's anything you're looking for drop a comment down below i already got sale fin mollies listed on there and this is the first trap we're going to be setting at this location guys if you look down there i already see a ton of fish now there will be some bycatch with mosquito fish that i'm not necessarily interested in keeping but i'm just going to throw this down there doesn't really matter where it lands it will catch fish so that's all set ready to go and we did see a ton of jewel cichlids cruising down this creek so we're going to set it in that pit over there. Last time I was here, I think we caught around 50 of these jewel cichlids. So I'm going to get this baited up with some cat food real quick. And then we'll head over to my friend Phil's house, see what fish he has for sale right now. Guys, we just saw a school of probably like 20 something jewel cichlids. And we're going to be moving around a lot of stuff in the fish room just to ensure we have enough space for everything I plan on doing. I'm thinking about dividing some of the 40 gallon tanks into five sections so that we could start getting shrimps and other smaller little fish. And I'm going to start phasing out some of the tanks in the fish room from like being tanks where we put live catches in to tanks where we put fish for look look at all the jewels down there that whole stream that we saw there's a bunch of jewel cichlids so we're gonna throw one of these traps over in this pit area now this is the polluted spillway i will be quarantining these fish you guys won't be seeing this till a few days after i've caught them so if you go to rob's aquatics.shop should be good to go and that traps right down there that should be perfect so we're gonna let these sit we're gonna cruise around go to my friend's house get a lot of the stuff and then come back and check these traps in a few hours after letting them sit and marinate and hopefully we catch a lot of mollies and a lot of jewel cichlids so now we're at phil's house guys where we're going to be picking up a lot of fish to start building up my little fish store that i got going on it's a great opportunity for me to share a lot of the fish that phil has with you guys so we're here today to pick up a hundred fish from phil i already got them bagged up i'll show you guys them in a second but just a little give you guys like an idea of what phil does here he's a master fish breeder he's a little light on guppies right now he usually has like 20 or so but right now he's got his main staple his beautiful little black corridors we're definitely getting these he's got these koi guppies right here he's got some more corridors he's got lemon eye ricinos plecos oh god look at the size of that black corridor that adult looks damn near like a big hoplo we got even more bigger quarries back here he's got a ton of these nice little planet tank fish oh my i don't know if you could get the zoom on here but he also has these guppies but right down here guys we got even more guppies now if you guys are interested in anything here i'll come back and buy up all of phyllis fish if it's something you guys want to see on the site we got a lot more guppies over here now i know the ones that are back over in this tank are the panda dumbo ears i'm pretty sure these guys are beautiful i don't think he's selling these yet he's still building up his little colony but he's got easily 50 tanks in here right down here we have a lot of those plecas that i was telling you guys about they're absolutely gorgeous contemplated getting some of those today but i didn't if you guys think i should let me know but he's also got some little shrimps right here he's got the orange shrimp he's got carbon rillies he's got yellows he's got greens he's got he's got all sorts of shrimp in here as well so overall phil's place is looking awesome we did buy a hundred fish from phil right now i'll show you guys what we got so he's been breeding a million of these guys right here just some absolutely beautiful little 
Super red bristlenose plecos. These guys grow out and look incredible in planet tanks. They have amazing color. They get the nice little beards and they look beautiful. And he actually gave me an idea for when I ship to you guys. You see this little block floating around in there? That's actually a form of filter media that takes out all the toxins. So it actively absorbs it from the bag. So I will definitely be doing that coming down the line. But we're going to get all these guys back in the fish room and I'll show you guys the other fish we bought just now today. Also, look, look how many guppies are down here. Phil is like literally his own little fish farm. It's a great concept. When I eventually have my own house, I'll get a shed and set something up like this as well. But we also got 50 of the black corridors, guys. These are some of the rarest fish, some of the rarest catfish you could get. They're beautiful little black corridors. So we're going to get these guys set up in a 40 gallon tank together. We're going to be evicting the gulper catfish. I'm sorry, but I'm going to be making space and I'll probably just keep my own personal pets in the 300 and 120 gallon tank. We're going to be moving out all of the African cichlids. You'll see it in time. But now that we picked up these fish from my friend Phil, we're gonna go to my other friend's house and get a 300 gallon stock pond. And now we're back at the house, guys. The fish we got from Phil and the jewel cichlids we caught are temperature acclimating in the fish room. And right now what I wanted to do with this pond right here is I actually wanted to get it set up and start getting it ready for all these platies. If you guys remember, we caught loads of these platies right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove this water lettuce, or not water lettuce, it's this uh, water water hyacinth and we're going to catch out every single platy from this pond also so I could get idea of what I actually have because it's been a long long time since I actually used this or checked this rather like thoroughly it's pretty deep water you could see <gasps> Dead no the temperature oh we got to save them damn He's okay hard. well yeah we got a lot of live ones but a lot of them have passed it's been really hot these last couple days it must have got too hot so i guess no more platies in this pond and this turned into a saving fish mission so i'm gonna grab a bucket we're gonna find whatever live ones there are damn that really sucks dude we're bringing them back in the fish room asap i didn't this is why it's important to check and i should have earlier but i had no clue that was too hot did i just get a fin flap from you buddy not that guy obviously oh, the Dalmatian might have given me a fin flap. Well, either way, guys, this just turned into its whole project in itself. This is bullshit. Fuck. Well, either way, upgrading them to a bigger double water volume thing will be a lot better. But either way, I don't think I'm going to keep any of these outside anymore. So I'm looking at the pond right now, guys, and it's becoming very apparent to me. I think this was an oxygen issue. It got really hot today, and I'm pretty sure that's why these fish actually passed. You can see the water evaporated a ton. I had it a couple inches higher, and I keep seeing a bunch of platies and stuff come up to the surface to try to get air. So what I'm doing right now is, guys, I'm still just throwing all these plants over so I can kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with. We had so many platies in here that we might not have actually lost a lot. There's no real way for us to know, but I already got a few of the survivors. In this bucket of clean water in here, they're still gorgeous. Um, but I definitely need to get them back up to health. I just saw this other guy at the top right here. Still another beautiful platy. Hopefully Wilson, Wilson survived a house fire and, <laughs> and being alone, isolated in a tank, exposed to the elements for a long time. But we still have a lot of the beautiful platies alive in here. I just, I'm looking for them as they come up to the surface for right now. Oh, I see a couple mixed in here. And we also started filling up. Yes, we got some of these guys still. Oh, they're both alive beautiful but i'm gonna check we're gonna see how many we actually have left in here i do this actually really sucks i'm really upset about this i took a lot of pride in having a really nice platy pond we lost a lot with some beautiful colors so now i know we're definitely gonna continue phasing out stuff in the fish room there's tons of live ones there's actually still tons of them so i just gotta keep going saving these fish i mean ugh. this is the tough part with keeping stuff outside it's hard to keep tabs on everything and know the condition everything's in but we definitely lost a lot of platies i had far greater than this i mean this guy is a beautiful little juvenile and there's still tons of them alive so i'm gonna continue getting these plants out of here just to get them out of the way i'm sure a couple dead ones oh look there's Damn, dude. I just saw platy swimming in here too. So what we're gonna do is right now, guys, is I'm kind of all over the place. This really caught me off guard. I'm still gonna get all the plants in this pond right here because then if there are platies hiding in the weeds or whatever or whatnot, I'll be able to know. I'll be able to see them swimming. And then after we get all these plants transferred over and I catch out everything from the platy pond, we're gonna definitely, definitely remove all these plants once more, put them in here and catch out all the platies from this pond. I'll keep this pond right here for cichlids. But I just saw a beautiful blue wag. He's still alive still breathing it's gonna take a lot to bring these guys back you see him he's got life still so there's still a chance now that we almost got all this out of here oh i see another gorgeous one as long as we could save a couple of the really nice colorful ones 
we should be okay. We should be okay, but I see a good group right here. Some absolute beauties. The longer I take to do this, the worse it is, to be honest, but we still got a ton of beauties in here. And I have some bad news about the abandoned fountain as well, guys. The abandoned fountain, they started construction there, and the fish are, I didn't see a single one. But I'm just gonna throw these out real quick. How are you doing, buddy? Mm hmm. You still got life in you? It's hard to say. I'll leave him in there for just a little bit just because it seems like he might still be alive, but I think we still do have a ton of these, which I'm very thankful for because I think the air of the abandoned fountain is actually over, unfortunately. But more plants right here. Get them right there. And as this is filling up, we'll continue the process of doing this and it should end up working out fine. I mean, I only realistically see 30 out of a couple hundred dead, which I, realistically, I didn't want to lose a single one of these, but if that's the case, and that's what it took for me to understand and realize what's happening with these outside ponds right here, then, you know, that's a sacrifice that I guess just had to be made for me to learn a lesson. It's the first time I've ever kept stuff outside. So you guys are experiencing the learning curve with me, to the do's and don'ts. But now that that's all situated, there's still a bunch of floaters right here. I'm going to get all these floaters out just to make sure. And we have those fish still acclimating in the fish room, so... We're just gonna get all the floaters out, everything I can see that is dead, because then we're going to actually drain this whole thing down and drain it all into a net, and then everything that ends up in here should be alive. I think this really was a mix between the heat and the oxygen, so both of those issues will be resolved as soon as we get them in the fish room. And I was thinking about, guys, my gulper, my fajaca puffer, and all that stuff, it's for sale. It's up for grabs if you guys want it. Are you alive, buddy? This guy's questionable. Anything questionable, I'm gonna put in the keeper bucket just because I'm unsure. But I think we also got some platies alive in here still. Yep, this guy right here just jumped. Good boy, good boy. Anybody else in here alive? I know I, yep, I know I netted a few live ones. I might sit this in the water just so we could see what comes up to the top and go about it that way too. I haven't had a lot of fish loss in a long time. This is the most fish I've lost at one time in forever, which is really sucks. You know, I actively try to learn and improve, but ultimately I'm still human to make mistakes. Cause and effect of this hobby, to be honest with you guys. But I do see, at the longer this sits here actually, the more start to pop around and the more I'm able to actually see our lives. Now they're trying to fight for oxygen. Beautiful, beautiful, come alive. They're like literally zombie fish. It's, I'm gonna have to bring them back from the brink of death. It sucks. Did this guy just flop? Yes, he did. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I'm kind of unsure of some of these. So now I'm going to put them in the water and just see who stays down. I'm going to remove this. So I'll remove these leaves. And I'm going to start sorting through this, guys. I'm not going to make you guys sit through all this with me. Um, I'm going to cut the camera and come back to you guys once I have more definitive answers here. I've got good news and bad news, guys. Me and Camera Girl just sorted through all the platies in that net. And we found a ton more still alive. I mean, some of them are going to be looking a lot wonky just because. But if you look right here, there's a ton of fish coming up to the surface right now. So I'm just going to take this net. I see one of my favorite platies in this whole pond just now. I just scooped him up, but a lot of them are still alive and we caught them just on out. So, oh my God, this is why I love this pond so much. It's because there's such stunning fish in here. It would have sucked to lose them all. And I think, but I think there's, this guy might be out for the count. Please don't tell me it's my favorite one. Luckily it's not. Just show us signs of life, buddy. Just show us signs of life. As long as they show us something, we're good. But these guys, my absolute favorites for sure. But as long as one of these fish, as long as they show us signs of life, I'm willing to try to save them. As long, all I need is a chance, guys. All I need is a chance. I could revive you, my boys. I could revive. But we got another net right here. So all that, all this means is I just need to be more receptive and careful about everything going in here. I think I need to set up another tank low key to get all these guys straight. But I see it. We still have a ton of platies. I think the majority of the pond actually did survive. It's just we did lose a good number of them luckily we did actually save for the most part i mean there's still time to tell some of these guys are questionable still it's really only a question of time whether or not how many we were actually able to save but wilson is popping up for water. yeah at least wilson's coming up for air wilson's a juggernaut dude wilson could live through world war three but right here on the side of this pond right here guys there's a plug so i'm gonna pull the plug out and i'm just gonna put my net right here and this should drain the pond beautiful beautiful so we're gonna keep draining this down. Oh, my shoes are getting soaked. We'll see what all comes from this. Um, at the very least, it'll bring the water level down, so I'll be able to see how many platies are left in there. But, oh, I just saw one go through. So, we'll just hang out here for a little bit. Poor camera girl, her shoes are getting destroyed. But I think I only saw one platy. If they come out through this drain, there's a 50-50 chance whether or not they're alive or dead, which is, oh! One of the loaches popped in. Oh, and a glass catfish. Oh, that's so awesome to see they're still doing all right. All right, cool. 
So a couple of the oddballs just popped through. I'm gonna drain this down a little bit more, plug this off, and we'll just see what we got going on in here right now. Please cooperate. I don't think so. Okay, I'm cool with the slow leak, but I did just see another loach. Oh God, damn dude. It's really sad, it's really sad stuff. Look at this, <laughs> look, one of the loaches survived. We got this guy right here. Oh, he's good. A class catfish, guys. If you're wondering if they're still alive, yes they are. So we're gonna get all these guys in the keeper bucket real quick. Glass catfish, we got another platy right here. I really hope this guy makes it. And I think the last thing, last thing out of here right now is this coolie loach. There we go. Cool. Okay. I'm glad to see some of the loaches survive this heat wave. I'm going to keep draining this down again just to see what comes up. That worked pretty good. And this is not what I was hoping to come home to. I was hoping to come home to like the hundreds I had in here. So if you keep outside ponds, just know this is a possibility. Thank God I caught it when I did though. Because it could always be worse. It's true to life. It could always be worse. Ponds almost drained down. I might have to actually tip this whole thing over to get everybody out and catch them all in the net. I don't like that. I don't like how weak the stream's getting. We need that stronger stream to make sure everything gets out of here is it does the net still able to stay under that yeah okay perfect it's getting pretty low pretty low i still don't see wilson i know he's still in there but i don't see him he's a master of disguise and i still see some platies in the 300 gallon tote that we just dropped down that's about all the water we're gonna get yeah oh no this is these are actually both garamis right here huh? so two garamis still alive hell yeah I've already accepted my shoes are gonna get wet. A lot of the platies we threw in this bucket of cooler water actually seem to have recovered. Well, either way, this is all that's left. Oh no. Oh, is. Is, where's Wilson? There's Wilson. Wilson, it's your dad. Wilson, hi. We experienced really traumatic events together. <laughs> We're blood brothers. We're trauma bonded. I see a couple more platies left in here. We'll just net all these guys up. I'll put them in a tank for now. And then tomorrow during the heat of the day when it's the hottest, I'll check and see what a, oh my God. <laughs> that loach is getting huge. But during the heat of the day, I'll check to see what the temperature is like in the bigger 300 gallon tub. It might actually be nice enough to put some platies in. It's just really a question of, you know, how hot. Oh, there's another loach and a platy. There's the loach. Nice platy right here. Come on, butter. Come on, butter. I, ain't, I don't want to crush you against the thing. There you go. So, actually, not as bad as it looked off the top. I see Wilson, a couple of his compadres over there. Boom. Scooped him up, I believe. No, Wilson juked me out. Well, regardless, we got more live fish in this net. So, dude, <laughs> these loaches are actually getting huge. Look at the size of these loaches. They're growing like crazy. I might keep them outside just because they seem to be doing really, really well. Come on, Bubba. Boop. Then we got this next loach. They're so difficult to handle. Oh my god, and these monster platies. Look at this one. <laughs> this platy is huge. Get him in there. And this loach is growing beautifully. And we got some of our stunner blues right here. Still alive, still kicking. There we go, buddy. Another one. Hell yeah. I'm actually really happy now seeing how many survived the heat just now. But we got this guy right here. Beautiful loach. This guy has doubled in size since adding him in there. And it seems like we got a couple more struggling right here. I really don't want to give up on them until like they show they're truly out. So, oh, buddy swam. So I think these guys for right now, we're going to get all these guys in a tank in the fish room. And then we'll continue sorting through this pond as this one fills up. So right here we have Wilson and the surviving Garami and a loach right here. We're going to get them added in to the upgraded pond. So they could chill out in there. I think there might be a couple platies in here. Are you alive, buddy? Or either of you alive? Oh, he's alive. So I still will put a few. There you go. In here, just because maybe, I mean, we got to see whether or not they could survive in here. I mean, we'll check the temperatures, how it is on the 300 gallon pond. Hopefully it's livable, but we're also going to get the rest of the loaches and the glass catfish back in there because they actually were doing really well. It just got too hot for the platy. So I'm going to keep this filling up and we're going to bring these fish back into the fish room and get them all added into a tank. All the tanks are cycled completely. They've been up and established for a few months now. So it shouldn't be anything they can't handle. I also have some tilapia defrosting so that we could uh, feed the monsters. The monsters are hungry. Now the question is, what tank do we put these guys in? So I'm going to get them in a tank and also start treating them. Just because they need it. They definitely need it. Oh, buddy. Dude, one of the jewels took it upon himself to go skydiving. And he's fine, but he's a little silly. And I think what I'll do is I'm gonna catch out these plat. Actually, I could leave these platies in here. And we'll just get them added into this right here. It'll be a lot better for them. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do is right now is I'm gonna take everything from this tank or this right here and throw them 
in here. I'm just gonna dump everything out into this net. I see two loaches in there, honestly it's fine. But right here, guys, are all of my platies that we have left. There's still a couple hundred in that group right there. And we're just gonna get them all added into this tank. And I'm gonna start treating this tank tomorrow. I'm gonna let them settle in right now. But we also gotta give it a little bit of time to see how much fish we actually lost. But for right now, with the air on and everything, they should adjust beautifully well. And now that we're in the fish room, I actually gotta make a couple moves. So I think about what we're going to be doing as far as with the fish we caught. And I'm gonna be taking out the gulper. Guys, the gulper is up for sale. If you want the gulper, you could have it. I'm gonna actually move him down with the fajaca and get all the fish from Phil into that tank. So real quick, I'm just gonna catch out these fish. Whatever's left in here will go down with the grouper or the gulper and the fajaca. And before the lights go out, guys, we're going to feed the fish outside. We got the 120 gallon cichlid tank that's doing beautifully. The vieja is super colored up. The paco are growing like weeds and everything in this tank is doing great. And in the top right corner, you can see, I actually have some tilapia defrosting right there, ready for them to eat. But the cichlids are doing great. So real quick, I'll feed them. They've been doing really well with just the sponge filters. And I added in that blue crawfish. You see him sitting on top of the rock, king of the hill. He's looking really good. So real quick guys, before the lights go out, We'll do a feeding of these guys. I feed them pretty heavy, do water changes often. And that's why these guys are growing so good. Eventually, I do want to move these guys out into tubs, into totes, like we just had those platies. But where I went wrong was, I'm going to end up hooking up a stronger pump to the one I have in the water, and then run the water all the way up to that top pond and back. I think if I had a constant water flow, this would have played out totally differently. So we'll try that for right now though. These guys, the cichlids seem to handle the temperature very well. I mean, they're growing, I could probably throw throw them into a pond and they'll do just fine. Like the tubs, those platies were in, they could handle it a lot better. But also with the constant running water, they'll constantly have a supply of oxygen and the water will still be cooler regardless. So now that they've eaten pretty good, I'm gonna just grab this tilapia. Hopefully I don't spook the boys real quick. No, frick dude. Well, I guess I'll wait to grab the tilapia while the Paku and stuff are still feasting. You can see the Paku in this tank, they've doubled since we caught them, literally doubled. So I'm really happy to see that. I'm thinking I also want to get these cichlids out of here to use this tank as a monster fish grow out and also hold fish for sale for you guys. So like I could go out and catch like 30 Paku, little tiny Paku and sell them to you guys. I think that would be really awesome. Sorry guys, sorry. I mean, realistically the water temperature in here isn't even that hot. I think it really was just an oxygen. It, that Paku did not care. I just grabbed that tilapia. You saw that? Did not give a single F dude. He just, yeah. I also have another brown crawfish in there. But for what now, we're going to get this tilapia cut up and feed these bad boys real quick. I usually just do it like this because they're all big fish and they all get a good sized chunk. So I might actually cut all these pieces in half just so they all get some. I leave some bigger chunks for a little red because it's really hard for him to compete with all the smaller fish. But if you guys are also local to South Florida and you're interested in any of these fish, just let me know, bro. It's a lot easier for me to sell locally to you guys and I'll just track it through the store for legal reasons. But Little Red's primed and ready to go. Oh, <laughs> the auction just took it out of my hand. Little Red, get in there, buddy. Mmm, mmm, aggressive. He's so aggressive when he eats, but oh my God, look how much food he got in his face. He's choking on it low key, but they got gill plates so they they could actually crush food. And the reason this tank always looks so musty is guys, is there's a film, there's a green film and I need to get an algae scrubber to actually have the water look cleaner because the water is clear. Oh my God, he is so chunky. Oh my God, the bites are like a dinosaur. They're going crazy. I literally every single day, every passing oh, day, just spit up a big piece. I need to feed more. F I need to feed more every passing day to these Paku and this red tail. Look at him. He's dang near ready to go in the pond. He's almost ready. But now that that's ready, out of the way, we're gonna get all these fish we got added into the tanks back in the house. And hopefully, I'm really hoping those platies pull through. I'm gonna try my best to revive and keep alive as many as possible. I just cut out the gopher. Oh my God, is this thing a blob? Oh my God. Look at how fat he is. <laughs> He's doing awesome, literally love the gulper, but I do have to move him to a different tank real quick. We're going to put him in this tank over here, guys. If you want him, he's up for grabs. He's doing really, really well. He's super fat and healthy, as you guys can see. The stomach on that boy is crazy, but we'll leave him alone, let him do his thing. He just ate some cichlids, I could tell. So real quick, all the jewel cichlids and stuff, we're gonna get in that Fajaca tank. I gotta get more tanks and move stuff around, but we got a ton of these jewel cichlids right here. If you guys are interested, definitely let me know, because these guys 
are stunning. Right now, they're a little washed out because they're stressed, but you can see got a lot of good colors, a lot of nice fish in there. So we'll get them added in right here. It's gonna be very hard for us to see all of them just because of the setup right here. We got a lot of betta fish still, but all those jewel cichlids are now added into that tank. And we're going to get all the fish we bought from Phil into this tank as well. I cleared it out. There's nothing in there that's gonna harm them. And there's a good amount of driftwood in there for the little guys to snack on. So first fish bag, we got all these black corridors. We've had them temperature acclimating and I'm going to give you guys an update on everything in the morning. You guys will see this a few days after it's done. So there's enough time for us to uh, make sure everything's going swimmingly. So I think this bag is now cleared of all the corridors. We now got 50 black corridors right here, ready to go and add into this tank. Again, these will all be listed online. Beautiful. This is around eight times larger than the tank they were in, so they should be more than good. I'll probably do a water change tomorrow morning on everything. But now we're gonna add in the super red plecos, and I intentionally got really small little guys, because I think it'll be safer to ship them to you and for them to adjust to your water parameters. So they're all added in here. I'm going to do a full water change on this tank tomorrow morning, but for right now, we're just gonna let everything settle in. Also update on the male betta fish and female betta fish. In this tank, we're selling a lot of them, so I'm actually going to be able to get all these guys in a bottle very soon and list it on the site if you're interested. But now we got the super weds. Super cool, super wed. Get these guys in that same tank as the Corridors because they'll have no issues, they'll get along great. And their diets are somewhat similar. I mean, the Corridors like a lot more proteins and pellets and stuff, but I'm still gonna throw in a lot of zucchinis and whatnot in there as well. Nothing left in the bag real quick. Definitely gotta make sure Plecos love to stick to bags. But right here, <laughs> we got 50 super red bristle nose plecos. So these guys look great. We're gonna get this little block out here. Nobody sticking to it. Now we're gonna get all these guys added in. They're immediately gonna start munching that drift. Oh my God. So all of them are available guys. If you're interested in them, just let me know. The site robsaquatics.shop. I'll give you guys an update on everything in the morning and let you know how everything's doing. And so I've got good news and I've got really bad news, guys. So the good news is all the fish you've seen so far have been surviving and doing well. All the platies right here are doing great. And now that they're under some lighting, you could really see why I didn't want to let these guys go or, you know, I was really hoping we didn't have a single tragedy. But luckily, since adding them into this tank, Nothing has passed. And then obviously all the plecos and corridors are doing really good. I'm really happy with this tank and with these guys from Phil, they're doing great. So I feel pretty confident they'll do great in your tanks at home as well. But I got some bad news for you guys for a future video you guys will see. Very soon, I might end up homeless again. And that's all I'll speak on it for right now. Today's video is already a roller coaster. There's a lot more roller coasters to come. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, please like the video, subscribe channel, and turn on post notifications again. I thank you guys for watching watching these videos, make sure you have turned on post notifications, all notifications, hit the bell so you don't miss that video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.